Hi everybody and welcome to our next lecture and today we look into some of the basics of LTE and especially the physical layer because the knowledge for these things is very important uh, in many aspects. If you are a radio network design engineer, if you are a radio network optimization engineer, if you are into research or into uh, layer protocols, knowing how the bits of data are transferred onto an LT physical layer is one of the most important information. So I will uh, take you from the basics and in the end you will be able to completely understand how the bits of information, your zeros, ones and the binary information which is basically uh, all digital information is transferred onto your LTE physical layer. So let's begin and uh, where as you go through this lecture you will it will be very clear to you how LTE physical layers works. So let's start. So in the first part uh, we will need to define what is OFDMA. So OFDMA. That is your orthogonal frequency division multiple axis. What LT does uh, is that basically it divides a wider bandwidth of frequency into narrow band carriers. And the reason for basically dividing it into narrow band carriers is because of uh, the power performance and specifically the performance for time delay dispersion. So what happens is that, for example, in 3G, we had a bandwidth of 5 megahertz. So this is your bandwidth of 5 megahertz. What LTE does is that it divides this bandwidth into smaller subcarriers. This subcarrier is of 15 kilohertz, this one subcarrier. And this whole 5 megahertz is then divided into multiple subcarriers of 15 kilohertz. This is what OFDMA does. Be very clear that this is not a modulation scheme. This is a scheme in which you divide a bigger frequency into a s orthogonal subcarriers. And this is called a subcarrier. And remember the frequency that it is, has a frequency of 15 kilohertz. Now, once we have this concept clear, we go to the frame structure of LT, which I have drawn here for you. And in any frame structure, it has a time, uh, it has a time domain, as you can see, here's a time domain, and it has a frequency domain. So what we need to envision, or what we need to be very clear about is, how LT works in time and in frequency domain and once we have that clarity, we will be, will be very easy for us to understand the concepts of uh, optimization, capacity, planning and everything else. So as you can see in the frequency domain, you can have these subcarriers. So this is your subcarrier 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 and 12. So what the basic unit of LT is a resource block. And a resource block consists of these 12 subcarriers, the subcarrier that we drew here, the 12 subcarriers, so 12 into 15 kilohertz, that is 180 kilohertz. So one physical resource block, which I have shown here, is 180 kilohertz, that is in the frequency domain. What about the time domain? In the time domain, this is a slot of 0.5 milliseconds. And I will tell you what goes in this 0.5 milliseconds. But the basic uh, physical resource block is 180 kilohertz in frequency and 0.5 millisecond in time. Now let's get into this. What is in this 0.5 millisecond time domain? So what happens is that in this uh, in this slot, we have seven OFDM symbols. So basically, and one, one each OFDM symbol is about 7.52 microseconds and it consists of your cyclic prefix and then your data. So in each of this time slot, you have seven OFDM symbols. And basically what happens is on these OFDM symbols, your data is then mapped. 
So basically what will happen is that if we divide this into 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7, so you will have your first 71.5, this is the whole time is 71.2 microsecond of your OFDM symbol. So basically the first part is around 4.6 of your cyclic prefix and then is your data symbol. So in, in your first uh, 66 microseconds, you will have one OFDM symbol on your subcarrier 1, one on subcarrier 2, one on subcarrier 3, then one on subcarrier 4 up till subcarrier 12. And then the same pattern repeats for your second resource block, your third and your fourth and your fifth. And how you calculate your resource blocks? Basically, you divide your 5 megahertz by your <coughs> sub uh, by your subcarrier uh, spacing that is your uh, resource block frequency width that is 180 kilohertz. So I will uh, get to that as well. Uh, how that we how we calculate uh, the 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 number of resource blocks from your bandwidth. But for now, what we need to go back is that we have one resource block, 180 kilohertz in one time slot of 0.5 millisecond. And in that 0.5 millisecond, we have seven OFDM symbols. And what about the resource element, something called RE? So RE is your, this is seven, one of these, one of this OFDM symbol mapped onto a particular subcarrier. So you divide this time slot into seven OFDM symbols and one of those that OFDM symbol mapped onto a particular subcarrier frequency is your resource element. So one OFDM symbol, one subcarrier. So in time domain it will be like this. This is your subcarrier of 1 and this is your time of 71.2 microseconds. This is your resource element. And when you go into radio network planning, uh, you will see that you have to define the energy per resource element that is called EPRE. -E, and you have to define your resource uh, resources energy according to that. And then in this grid, basically, you map a particular OFDM symbol onto a particular channel. So basically, you will have uh, here reference symbols. You will have your physical downlink shear channel. You will have your PDCCH mapped onto these OFDM symbols. And if you go into your optimization uh, trainings or your optimization content, when you say that, uh, our network settings has that for the first three OFDM symbols, we will have PDCCH. So the first three symbols from these seven OFDM symbols will be your PDCCH for that particular uh, slot. Coming from the slot to the next section is, you combine these two slots, 0.5 millisecond and 0.5 millisecond, and then you get one millisecond of two slots. That one millisecond with two slots is called a subframe. You have your subframe. One millisecond. So we told you about physical resource block, but in LTE, the scheduling is based not on this resource block. It is based on one thing called a scheduler resource block. So there's a difference between your PRB and your SRB. SRB is your scheduling resource block and that consists of this one resource block and this time period. So if I color it out, so it will be this. So this is your, this is your scheduling resource block because LT scheduling decisions are all based on one millisecond your TTI is one millisecond. So this is how the scheduling, uh, the scheduler will uh, allocate the resources, blo uh, resource block as per the users and as per the physical channels. So this is uh, how basically the physical, LT physical layer works. 
and uh, in terms of time domain you can see that this is the subframe and then if you combine 10 subframes it becomes uh, a whole LT frame that consists of 10 milliseconds. So now I think uh, next uh, I will give you an idea how to calculate the number of resource blocks uh, from the bandwidth and I, I have seen a lot of material on the internet and there's a number of uh, you can say uh, misconceptions and wrong methods of calculation and we'll go to the exact formula and see how we calculate that. Uh, let's uh, check the correct formula to calculate the number of resource blocks from a channel bandwidth. If you uh, try to check and test some of the methods given on the internet, one of them is for 1.4 megahertz and they give you an approx uh, calculation of the resource block. If you apply the same formula of 10% uh, uh, dart band on the either side for the rest of the uh, resource blocks, it's fine. But if you apply the 10% rule on 1.4 megahertz, your resource block will be 7 instead of 6. So let's see the formula, the actual formula that 3GPP uses to uh, calculate the number of resource blocks and I will test you, uh, test it in front of you for 1.4 megahertz channel bandwidth and also for 3 uh, megahertz channel bandwidth. So let's see the formula first. So the formula is basically for the guard band, guard band on the right side and on the left side uh, as frequency has, is centered on one uh, frequency and then we have a right part and the left part. So guard band is equal to your bandwidth of the channel minus n ref into delta f minus delta f and you divide this by q. So this is your channel bandwidth. It can be 1.4 megahertz, 3 megahertz, 5 megahertz in LTE or 10 or 20. This n ref is basically when you divide your channel bandwidth by 180 kilohertz and it's, a, it's, it's the lowest round off. For example, if you have your bandwidth as 1.4 megahertz and that is equal to 1400 kilohertz. So if you divide 14 kilohertz by 180 kilohertz and why 180 kilohertz? Because 180 is the width of the resource block. So 15 into 12 is 180. So when you divide 1400 by 180, it comes out to be 7.77. So this is 7.77. We round it off to 7 because that is the most resource blocks possible if we do not have any uh, other stuff. So this n will be 7 for, so for 1.4, we will write here, n ref will be 7. And delta F is basically the width of your subcarrier uh, of your resource block and delta F is 180 kilohertz. So if we put on here the formula so that is equal to 1400 minus your N ref is 7 into 180 minus 180 divided by 2. That comes out to be, you can calculate it. So it's as your 320 divided by 2, that is 160. So you will have a 160 kilo, 160 kilohertz guard band on both sides. So if this is your channel, this will be your frequency, used frequency. This is your guard band of 160. This is your guard band of 160. And the rest is your uh, 320. If you minus uh, uh, 160 plus 160 is 320, you minus it from 1400, you have 1080. And if you divide this 1080 by the resource block width, that is 1080 divided by 
180, you have your six resource rocks. Okay. So now let's do the same calculation for uh, three megahertz in order to check that our calculation is correct or not. So for three, your bandwidth is three megahertz. Let's calculate the end reference. That is, we multiply divide three thousand kilohertz divided by one eighty, and it comes out to be sixteen point six six. So our end ref will be sixteen. Delta F will be again one eighty. So here we put three thousand minus sixteen into one eighty minus one eighty divided by two. So what that comes out to be is that is three hundred divided by two, that is one fifty. So that's what the channel will look like is this is your guard band 150, 150, and this is your 2700. And if you divide this 2700 by your uh, resource block width, that is 2700 divided by 180, you get the 15 resource blocks. So that is basically the correct method to calculate your resource blocks, and this will help you in 5G as well, because 5G also carries. Uh, multiple subcarrier spacings and also multiple resource block lengths and you can basically use this to calculate the number of resource blocks in LTE. I hope you have liked our lecture for uh, LTE's physical layer basics and it will help you in understanding LTE better and uh, if you like our videos do not uh, forget to subscribe and we will meet together in another lecture very soon. Thank you so much.